hello all uh, welcome to the new video in this video we'll see the stability factor of voltage divider bias so in the past uh, videos what we have seen uh, we calculated the stability factor for fixed bias and then we calculated the stability factor for collector to base bias so we came to the conclusion that collector to base bias is a has a good I mean it is a stable that circuit is stable than the fixed bias circuit so this is the next biasing scheme which will come across in BJT as well as MOSFET so this is the popular biasing scheme called as voltage divider bias so as you can see the voltage is divided between R1 and R2 and that is being applied to the BJT so will uh, we are familiar with the pattern like how to calculate stability factor so we we'll straight away move to that part so we know that ic is equal to beta times ib plus beta plus 1 ico so this is let's call it as equation 1 so differentiating equation 1 with respect to ICO, it is partial differentiation delta IC upon ICO. This is nothing but our stability factor S. Yes. This will become beta times delta IB upon delta ICO plus beta plus 1. So, this is our standard equation. Now, we need to apply KVL to the this uh, voltage divider circuit uh, to find delta IB upon delta ICO. So we need to find, I mean, we need to modify the equation in such a way that we get the S factor totally in terms of this resistance. Okay. So so let's do that. Uh, but uh, we'll not apply. We'll first draw the heaven in circuit for this voltage divider bias so that it will be easy for us to calculate the KVL equations. Okay, it is easy to form, uh, use that equation in the heavening model. Let's simplify this. So this is our voltage divider bias circuit, and this is the heavening equivalent of this circuit. So uh, comparing these two circuits, uh, like it is easy to notice that V heavening is equal to VCC into R2 upon R1 plus R2. Okay, this voltage will get divided here. So just a simple voltage divider rule. This is into R2 upon R1 plus R2. And uh, then R7 and then becomes R1 parallel with R2. So this, this resistance. Okay, this is the R7. And rest of the circuit remains the same. There is RC here, collector resistance and the resistance in the emitter. That is RE. And this is our power supply, VCC. This is the battery. So, let's apply KVL to this equation. I choose uh, the direction of base current in this way. Okay, this is IB. This is the IE. So applying KVL to this equation, as you can see, this is a base current IB and this is IC. And this is IE. So our KVL, the equation then becomes IE into RE plus this is a VBE drop plus IB into R7 is equal to V7 so this part we know that I is equal to IB plus IC so that becomes IB plus IC times RE plus VBE plus IB into R7 is equal to V7 so there is a common IB here so let's take IB common we'll get IB into RE plus R7 plus IC into RE plus VBE is equal to V7 so let's call this as equation 2 so differentiating equation 2 partial differentiation with the ICO will then it will reduce to 
so this should become uh, let me take another page so what we'll do we'll uh, differentiate equation 2 with uh, respect to ICO so this will then reduce to RE and R7 in our resistances which are constant okay so this will become del IV upon del ICO plus this will become RE into del IC upon del ICO this is a constant this will become 0 this will become 0 so this is 0 also we know that uh, from previous uh, equation stability factor s is nothing but del ic upon del ic o so substitute this value here so our equation then becomes re into s plus re plus r 7 a into del ip upon del ico this is equal to 0 so del ib upon del ico will then become minus s times re upon re plus r 7 a okay let's put this in box this is an important equation so what we got, we got the value of del IB upon del ICO with respect to the resistances and the stability factor. So now our next uh, this one, uh, equation will be very simple because we have a, a standard equation called as IC is equal to beta IB plus beta plus 1 ICO. That is the equation for collector current. So they will substitute this value. Okay. So let it be equation C. So let's substitute that value and then we'll uh, get the stability factor for voltage divided by us. So this uh, stability factor S is equal to beta times delta IB upon delta ICO plus beta plus 1. And also for voltage divided by us we got that delta IB upon delta ICO is nothing but minus S times RE upon RE plus R thevenin. So let's, let's uh, substitute this value into this equation. So that then becomes S is equal to beta times this is minus here. So minus beta S RE upon RE plus R 7 n is equal to oops, plus beta plus 1. Okay. So let's take this S in this side. Then it will become S times 1 plus beta re upon re plus r 7 so this will become 1 is equal to 1 plus beta okay just i have shifted the one here so the final stability factor equation will become this is equal to 1 plus beta upon 1 plus beta times re upon re plus r 7 So this is the stability factor for voltage divider bias. For voltage divider bias. So now let's see how to analyze the stability factor. So we are not sure whether this is a the circuit uh, is has good stability factor or bad stability factor. So let's uh, dig into that equation. Now. Okay. So I have just uh, rewrote this equation in this form. That is, uh, this is RE plus R I have taken it to both numerator and denominator. Just I have simplified this equation. Okay. So now what we'll do? We'll divide both numerator and denominator by RE. So let me write that. divide both numerator and denominator by re okay so then our stability factor will reduce to 1 plus beta into 1 plus 
R7 and upon RE Oops. and plus R7 and upon RE okay and in denominator what happens we get 1 plus beta plus R7 in upon RE so if just imagine if R7 in upon RE this ratio is much much less than 1 so if it is much much less than 1 then we can ignore this okay 1 plus much much less than 1 is approximately equal to 1 okay so that then what happens we can like, ignore this part so then our stability factor will become 1 plus beta into 1 upon 1 plus beta so stability factor will become 1 which is a fantastic stability factor so it means you have a circuit so let's say this is the temperature range 0 to 150 degrees celsius okay so in that case your stability factor s so it is constant okay it doesn't vary at all it means uh, if you build a circuit at say 30 degree uh, celsius so this is 30 it will work exactly same the operating point will remain same even if you go up to 150 degree celsius so that so it is that stable okay and also r7 and upon re must be less than 1 it means we need to maintain this factor so that is what is uh, important so what we have reached a conclusion that if we maintain r7 in upon re that is less much less than 1 this ratio then the stability factor will be approximately equal to 1 which is a fantastic result okay so the discoveries didn't happen like at once okay it took time first what happened our engineers built a fixed bias circuit and then they moved to collector to base bias to achieve a better stability collector to base bias and then they finally we ended up with voltage divider bias because it gives us excellent stability it means our operating point will remain same let us say this is our BJT characteristics. So this is our BJT characteristics. If you design your operating point to remain here, it will remain here no matter what the temperature is. That is, it is stable. This operating point is stable. So to keep this ratio less than one, our R heaven in should be less. So it means uh, our case will then become R1 parallel to R2 should be less ok it means uh, you need to choose less resistance R1 and R2 value ok see 10 and 10 this 10 and 10k means it is also like 5k if you use 10 ohm 10 ohm then it will be less in that way you need to choose a lesser value so and also you should choose both R1 and R2 as less because in that case your circuit will draw more current if both R1 and R2 are small more current more current it means less battery life so a better design would be R2 should be less than R1 ok so choose in this way and then your circuit will be stable and it is the best design possible ok thanks for watching guys uh, please subscribe to our channel and uh, if you have any doubts uh, regarding any of these three videos which we have discussed uh, like uh, it may be fixed bias or collected to base bias I think uh, calculation of stability factor should be now very simple so thanks for watching again please subscribe and uh, please like our facebook page too thank you